So I finally got the Folger Tech FT5 R2 assembled. Um, got that all put together and it's running now. So this is the video I've put together to kind of go through the build process. Try to include all the steps from the Folger Tech manual. Um, it was an in progress manual, but you know the the primary the structure build from that in progress manual was actually pretty good. Um, there are a couple little things that had complaints about um, but for the most part it was it's a pretty good printer it takes a lot of time a lot of effort to put it together um, but uh, I enjoyed it it was it was a lot of fun doing it and learned a lot about putting things together so if you watch this video um, I, I essentially just sped everything up at like I don't know it was 50 times speed or something like that so it's you know a 50 minute video or so um, but the actual time to assemble it was probably 15 to 20 hours. Didn't include it. Did not include everything. So uh, a couple of the complaints. Um, the first one really was, you know, the the bed and the bed heater. Um, the manual said that that was going to come pre-soldered. It, it didn't, which this isn't a huge deal, other than the fact that it's a thick aluminum plate um, bed heater. So trying to solder that um, is is difficult. So you need a lot of heat. Uh, I ended up sort of using a heat gun to heat the bed up, the temperature to pretty hot, to a lot hotter than I'd want to touch it, um, and then using so uh, the small soldering iron that I had to uh, actually solder it on there. Uh, was trying to do it at a, with a room temperature bed was just you know not going to work. Um, another complaint I guess would be it's not really that big of a deal if I had looked at this more closely um, I would save myself a lot of headache. But when assembling the wiring harness, um, actually they did a, a pretty good job of laying all that out for you. Um, the different wires that you need for the motor and thermistors and the heater for the hot end, things like that. They did a really good job of laying all those wires out. Um, the bad side of it was was that they, uh, like one over two of the wires, um, I think it was both of the motor wires, were flipped. So the connection for the motor was at the control board side and the connection for the control board side was up where the motor would plug in. Um, which wouldn't have been a big deal if I'd caught that. It'd been easy just to flip it at the very beginning. But after I got it all assembled, put it in the printer, um, and then went to hook everything up is when I noticed it. You know, the worst part about that is is that I just ended up needing to cut the wires from both sides of the connector and then solder them back on after switching them back because I really didn't want to take everything back apart. The The last complaint, I guess... It, it was a complaint, but then ended up turning into um, something that, you know, Folger Tech ended up fixing. So it, it, it's not really that big of a deal, but the power supply that they shipped with the printer um, was making some weird um, noises. And I, I had some videos, actually, I'd uploaded to so that I could contact Folger Tech and kind of explain to them what was going on. Um, and I'll link those in the description below. But, you know, the it was a really weird noises, um, a lot of smell that was uh, burning electronic smell. I ended up using it for a little while and it seemed sort of fine, but that, the noise was just, um, it just sounded like it was going to be a ticking time bomb. So I contacted the company, kind of explained to them what was going on, and they sent me a new one. So, and the, you know, the new one hasn't had any issues, um, hasn't had any issues since. So. Uh, so, you know, if, as you watch the rest of this video, just um, keep in mind that this is probably 20 or so hours of build time to put this together, and a lot more time after that to sort of get things calibrated. Um, and for the cost of this printer, uh, I'm honestly not 100% sure if it's worth all the effort, um, but the quality of printer it is. Not that saying it's a bad quality printer, but just compared to like a, a CR10 for example that you can get mostly assembled for about the same price if not cheaper 
Um, actually, I did. I bought this this FT5 on sale, um, and you get a CR10 for you know similar price as that, um, but without any of the assembly time. For me personally, that was why I wanted to get this printer is because I wanted to go through the assembly. Um, I really enjoyed that part, really learning about how the whole thing goes together. So that wasn't really a complaint from my end. Um, just if you're wanting to get into 3D printing and you're not interested in the assembly time, just know that this one will, will take a while. Um, so it may not be the one for you. That being said, if you really want to get into 3D printing and you really want to understand all the ins and outs of assembling one and how the thing works, this is actually a really good printer for that. So um, there's some painstaking things along the way that you'll learn, but uh, I, I definitely know a lot more about how a printer operates um, after having gone through it. Okay, so that's most of the comments that I've got for this printer. Um, I'm continuing to tweak things. I think since I've finished recording some of this stuff, I've added a uh, like a volcano on there, added a part cooling fan, um, filament runout sensors, um, actually ended up enclosing the thing, which I'll probably make a short video on that later. Um, the rest of this video is just going to be no audio, but, you know, feel free to watch it to see if there's, you know, if you're actually going through the build process, there may be something, something in this video that, that might help you along the way. Um, thanks for watching.